This is the Kev Baker Show. And now, here is your host, Kev Baker. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome back, and you are tuned in live to the Kev Baker Show right here on the number one network, www.truthfrequencyradio.com. Now we've got people listening all around the world right now, and I want to thank each and every one of you for continuing to tune in. Now I've been under the weather for at least a week now, and I have to thank each and every one of you profusely for sticking with me, because it can't be easy listening to me at the best of times let alone when I'm all blocked up and clogged up and sounding like this. So again, thank you all. And tonight, I'm joined by my sidekick, my partner in crime, Mr. Johnny Whistles. How's things, man? Doing fine, Kev. Looking forward to tonight's show with a new guest, as we say. But um, yeah, this should be a good one, Kev. And you know, Johnny, since our guest comes from the Wookiee Cave, How about you head on over there tonight and give all of these crazy Wookiees in the chat room a shout out. And, you know, if you want to join the chat room out there, truthfrequencyradio.com forward slash chat. Johnny Whistles. In there just now, Kevin, there's 32 in the chat just now. Thanks very much, everyone again. 32? 32? Yeah. It's share, folks. Come on, let's grow this one. (laughs) We've got the two in red. We've got Irish, Pete and Lucky. We've got Alan Surgener, Andrea Adams, Mr. Bill Demarest himself, Brendan O'Shea, Calvin Long, Charles Calvo, Chris Smith, Dan the Sufferman, we've got Daryl Bowles, Emperor of Wu, Jeff Phillips, Iferian, James Webster, the lovely Cat Landry, Kieran Thomas, Kenneth Knott, Lich de Lass, we've got Lynn Metcalf, Marco Magic, Michelle Smith, Nancy Lalonde, Peter Collins, Sam Ramirez, Spears Buddy, Star the Oracle. We've got Stephen Gray, Thomas Silk, Truth Frequency, I think that is. And the last but not least, number 33, Unconfirmed Truth, Kev. Oh, number 33. You have <laughs> got to love it. One of my favourite numbers out there. So then, tonight, folks, we are joined by one of the newest hosts on the network. He has taken over from my good friend, Mr. Joe Joseph, and he is steering the Freedom Link, every Monday and Wednesday, right here on Truth Frequency. Who am I talking about? Well, it is Bill Demarest. Now, if you've been hanging about TFR in the chat room in particular, Bill will be synonymous with all of you because he is the Photoshop assassin. And I thought that's where it kind of ended. However, oh, oh, this man's waters run very deep. And tonight, He is going to be getting a 41-year-old monkey off his back as he talks to us about something called the Earth Code. I can't wait to get into this. Bill, welcome back to the Kev Baker Show. Uh, Thank you, Kev. I'm uh, so overwhelmed by this opportunity. As I said, it's a 41-year-old monkey on my back. Uh, It's kept me alive. It's kept me sane. It's kept me going. It's driven me insane. And tonight I'm going to unleash it on the world. And the whole point here is if anybody is interested in learning it, I will teach it. It is it is incredible. But if nobody is interested in it and I don't have to do lessons, I'm happy. It's a win win solution for myself. And I think, Bill, people are going to be very interested in this because you've only really shared a couple of things with me and Johnny just before the show there, something called the Rock Code, stuff like that. Really looking forward to getting into this. But if I take you back 41 years to where this all began, how did the Earth Code even come about? Okay. Um, The the steps to achieve the state of consciousness that um, took me way, way, way beyond anything I can imagine happening to anyone else. Uh, I was practicing a method of uh, shutting down, putting my body to sleep and and opening my mind, completely and absolutely awake. 
what I was doing is I was reaching a point where the last part of my body I would feel would be, it would feel like a tight rubber band wrapped around my head, around the top of my head and under my jaw, and I would feel it move forward, and then it would snap off as if it were a rubber band. And the moment it snapped off, there would be a spark. I mean, a brilliant spark and the, the crack of a whip. And then I would no longer have a body or feel anything except for I would see the music. Well, one day I pushed it just a little bit too far. I didn't see the spark. I didn't I didn't hear any crack of a whip. All I saw was this overwhelming flash of white light. And the next thing I know, I am outside of the sheet of the purest white light I have ever seen. And this didn't blow my mind because I knew one thing. I am outside of my spirit viewing it. I questioned where my body was. And I started thinking about my left knee. It became a dark spot in this sheet of the purest white light I have ever seen. And as soon as I stopped thinking about it, it became brilliant white light again. As I lay there, I tapped into universal knowledge. I, I had answers to questions that uh, no one had ever made questions for. Well, when I was done and I sat up, oh, how I, how I connected my, my consciousness with my spirit, with my body was, I shook my left arm through remote control, which was certainly a strange sensation. I sat up and I sat there pretty dumbfounded and I thought, oh, this this, this, I have to teach people this. I have got to teach people this. This is my mission in life is to teach people how to do this. As I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, oh, you fool. Why didn't you look up and around you to see who was viewing you? Because evidently this beacon of white light was seen in realms that I can't even comprehend. Now, to get to the Earth Code, I lived in South Miami. And across the street was Coral Gables. So I went walking down the middle of the street, both Coral Gables and South Miami. And I realized that I needed a universal language to store what, what, was, what I was privy to. As I walked down the street, I'm thinking, well, my universal language, uh, I can't make symbols up because people can't remember symbols. So I'll use symbols everybody recognizes. And at that moment, I realized... I had never heard of Gamatria, but Gamatria was what I discovered. You have 26 letters and you use 10 numbers, zero to nine. Excuse me. Each letter has a number value and each letter has a word value. So I, as it would take as long to, it wouldn't take as long to tell you how it came to me as it, it took me to actually do it. It was 1A amplification, 2C couple, 3G God, 4S structure, 5K knowledge, 6D doing 7H heaven or happiness according to what plane you're on, 8I infinity, 9Q question, 10A amplification, 11B build, 12R relation, 13 judgment, 14 yourself, 15 wisdom, 16 experience, 17 pleasure, 18 life, 19 thirst, 20 marriage. 21 union, 22 family, 23 nature, 24 vow, 25 is X, the exception to the rule. 25 is the use of the earth code, which is multiplied knowledge. And 26 is zeal. Once I had this all sorted and <laughs> basically downloaded it in my brain, I wondered, well, what what is there any real value to this? Well, the first number that comes to your mind is 69. And in Earth Code, that's doing question. Doing what? Doing who? Doing how? Doing when? Doing it. 86 is infinitely doing. Infinitely doing what? Infinitely running out of things, infinitely throwing things out. So I realized that there was a real connection. It wasn't until, I don't know, about 10 years ago, I find out that the number 18 in, in ancient Hebrew is life, and in my code, it is life. Uh, I can go into detail a little later on why the words and the numbers fit. Just for example, one is oneself and three is God. 
So therefore, 13 is oneself before God. Therefore, it's J, judgment. Uh, 22 is a family because that's two genders taking care of two genders. Uh, 24, vow. That was a tough one. What strengthens the couple's structure? Couple two, four, structure. It has to be vow. 32 is prayer. 33 is Jesus. So when you started the show, it said 32. It said pray, prayer. Then it was 33, and that's Jesus. So I've been infected. I don't even... Infected's not the word. I have been enhanced by what I call the Pentel Pentium processor for the mind. Now, as for synchronicity, Bill Gates and I share the same birthday. And the use of the Earth Code, what it does is your brain is a transceiver receiver. We know the government can read your mind, and you know that dimensional beings can hear your thoughts. What I propose is anybody using this earth code in their brain will attract only the positive polarity because there is nothing, nothing negative about the earth code. For example, 666, six is D doing, 66 is Bible because there are 66 chapters. So therefore, 666 is either doing Bible or Bible doing. And it just about uh, puts me out of breath at the moment. What? <laughs> no, that's what brilliant, the... Bill. And, you know, for people out there, this gematria, when I first came across it, it is utterly mind-blowing. But I think there's a lot to it. We've even got a host here on the network. He's on a Wednesday night. He's called Zachary Hubbard. Now, I've listened to a couple of his shows. He was on with Chris and Cherie as well. And again, absolutely blown away. So, Bill, I do think there is a lot to what you're saying here. And, of course, there can be many interpretations of what all these numbers mean. But for you, this is your Earth code. Now, you mentioned something about rock codes. So do these numbers and these meanings turn up in music as well? Uh, that is something that having the, the Earth code run through my brain for three weeks uh, and... To, to get to what I discovered, uh, a friend of mine said, Bill, he knew I was different. He said, Bill, you have to read the teachings of Don Juan by Carlos Castaneda. Now, Don Juan is not the lover. Don Juan is the Mexican Indian sorcerer. And out of the five books I read, the most important thing I learned was you must maintain a separate 24 hour a day, seven day a week alternative reality something different than the real world the workaday world the the stubbing your toe in order to become a warrior and at at this point in my life i you know i was a wuss i was always the bully's favorite target i never thought i would live to see this day but if anybody is a survivor above and beyond uh you know just uh i, I gotta be honest with you i have attempted enough times it would take two hands to count my number of attempts of suicide but god just kept keeping me alive and i always wondered why so i would go through life looking and and waiting for the moment i could say oh this is exactly the moment that god kept me alive to see whether it was helping a friend or 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 seeing something that no one else, it was just i would wait for that moment when i could say yeah now i know why god kept me alive and as I said, God kept me alive and gave me my show so that I could interview Major Henry Hudson and a couple of counselors. Uh, it's just, if you listen to the song In the Air Tonight, Phil Collins is singing about this moment here. I am just about ready to, you know, goosebumps got goosebumps and, you know, that is chi. Uh, I am Billy from Billy Don't Lose My Number. Uh, I told Peter Gabriel to leave the group. Four months later, he did, and he's singing about Salis um, Salisbury Hill, his swan song. He's speaking about an eagle that flew out of the night, which was me. And, you know, he, he had to stretch and hear everything that I said that night. And, you know, when Phil Collins says, uh, I don't know if you know who, who I am, my friend, it wasn't until 1986 that I realized that he was singing about me. 
Well, it was 92 because I had never heard Billy Don't Lose My Number. But that's another whole that's another whole story. And the thing is, if you go into the archives and listen to my first two shows, you are going to be blown away by the existence and the life I've led. And the synchronicity I've, I've been saying for years. Rod Surly could not have written an episode of Twilight Zone that would even rival my day-to-day life. And if you go to the archives and check out Freedom Link, which is a uh, Superman logo with FL in it, and I live in Florida, so, you know, God set this up pretty good. He put the pieces together. And you're talking a synchronicity. Johnny Whistles, when's your birthday, dude? Unbelievably. The same day as Bill Demarest and Mr. Bill Clinton. Bill Gates. Mm, Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Oh. You don't want to share a birthday with Bill Clinton, Johnny. Oh, no, I do, Kev. Why? I, I, <laughs> well, unfortunately, he's still alive, so it's still associated with, with him. Oh, right. Yeah, I he, thought it, Bill Gates, I thought Bill it was Gates, just Bill I'm Gates. not sure about his birthday, yeah, and that's obviously, I got the names wrong. Uh, but mine's is actually the same day as Bill Clinton's. Okay. That leaves you out of our group, buddy. So I'm we've sorry. Got a <laughs> Bill Clinton, a Bill Demarest. We've got Bill Gates and Johnny Whistles. Johnny, you're the odd one out. Can we call you Billy Whistles? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Let's get back uh, to your Earth Code anyway, Bill. So you're hearing songs from Phil Collins, stuff like that. What other confirmations have you had from God or whatever source gave you this info? Uh, it it has it it works. It enhances your memory. It as I said, I have I have lost everything in my life three times. I have been a basket case. I have gained and lost a hundred pounds. States of depression that many people never come out of. And the one thing that kept me going is when I said, damn it, my earth code has value. I would, I never forgot it. I would use it and I would build a foundation. And here's the amazing thing. There, I cannot believe who I am and the strength of my brain and my knowledge right now, being a basket case for a year, uh, screaming in my head, I have nothing to think about. I have nowhere to go. I have no life. I am a basket case and I admitted it. But the Earth Code, it always brought me back to there's 26 realities and clocks bring you the whole trick here is if you read number, uh, Kev. OK, but let me ask you then, OK, because I was plagued for a while before 2012, that big date in December, the end of the right. Mayan calendar, by the number 1111 on clocks, 111. Seen it all the time, Bill. Now, what would that suggest to you with your Earth code? Uh, I, I know very well what it means, and um, I'll share it. Uh, the the two little dots between in between the eleven eleven, they're called a colon. Well, what happens in the colon? One matter is turned into other matter. Now, the 1111, what that is, B is build. You build on this side of the veil as well as building on the other side of the veil. If you're aware of the other side of the veil, what you do here affects over there. I was sharing with um, Caron, Sean Caron, that um, the law of attraction is very real. I just do not use it. I asked God not to give me any special powers. I told him that if I was Job in a past life, he could do what he wanted with me in this life. So I accepted the road he put me on. And there are a few times I tried to leave this road, but he wouldn't let me. You see, Bill, this is why I tell people to be careful what they wish for, because that law of attraction is very powerful. Well, yeah, it is. It is. That's why I, I don't use it and I don't. Uh, you know, sure. I, I I would love to think about this uh, yellow uh, chopper, gorgeous Harley. You know, one hundred twenty five thousand dollar bike, and I know when it appears in, in in my front yard, and I get on it the first time, that tree sitting next door neighbor is going to fall on me. So I don't use it. But exactly. what I'm getting, what I'm getting at is, what I'm building in this life will be in the other life. And many people have heard me, and I've put it in the chat room that. 
when you pass to the other side, you go to Star Vexers. It's a comedy club where, you know, what, what better than to be up there laughing your mm, off? Uh, you go to Star Vexers and you ask for Vex Star wearing a purple tie and you will immediately locate me. It, oh, to get back to the rock code. Oh, boy, you want to talk about. So using the Earth code. And seeing things differently as that alternative reality, which just, you know, it sparks the mind. The, uh, the other night after um, Quest for Truth, I did not go to bed until 6.36 that morning. Now, that is God in the midst of a Bible or doing God doing. I went and laid down. I woke up at 9.19, which is questioning thirst. Well, it's exactly right. I had to get to my coffee. What the Earth Code is, when you look at a clock, uh, it, it's a memory. And it's something that, that you use to remember. And the thing is, when you see a number, it will fit the situation you are in. Um, the Rock Code, tapping into universal knowledge. This does scare the living... You know, I try to keep my anonymity, and now I'm, I'm all over the world, and everybody knows I am. Will I am Demarest, which is dearest with an M. Hmm. Uh, I've pretty much been anonymous, and, and, and having the name of an actor, Uncle Charlie on My Three Sons, um, is pretty good, because people search my name, and, and this actor comes up time and time again. Uh, what's in the raw code? We, we know that um, Satan uses music. We go back to Laurel Canyon where MK Ultra virtually used rock and roll to destroy a, a generation. Yeah, it was social uh, engineering the more I look into it. Bill, that whole swing in 60s, it was a tool to steer the masses. Absolutely. But there's a code in it. <laughs> Oh, I do. I do. I quiver. I quiver because there are certain things. I mean, I'm protected by God and the angels, but there are certain things I am just I don't want to let out, but it's my duty to let it out. OK, in music, since I heard Jesus Christ Superstar. And if you I, I, I did request that you play that uh, that little video of mine, which I'll put the link in the room now and I'll I'll, I'll make it unprivate because it, that's um that's uh, pretty deep, and uh, it took me 41 years to become mature enough to handle this. Uh, Ten years ago, if I had this radio show and I had my delusions of grandeur, I would be standing in the middle of the street waiting for Phil Collins to pick me up. And I did many, many times. But the reality is I told him, I don't want your effing help. Stay the F away from me because you will only help me mess it up. So I, I, I put him in his space. I, I told him that uh, he was wasting rock and roll as an entertainment. And it was um, it was one of God's greatest gifts. Uh, Jimi Hendrix himself said that uh, he could if he had enough songs and enough audience, he could hypnotize the masses, which is exactly what they're they're doing with their music. Well, let me tell you what music has been doing is they are searching for the one. There's lyrics in music and the synchronicities I have gone through. Uh, I like to call it getting locked into a three lock box. Once you realize what's going on with the music and you realize that you have the key to move on to level two. When you go to level two, you see deeper into the music. You see what the lyrics are telling you. The one lyric that blows my mind is... Uh, uh, Queen, I, I have it written here. Uh, I, I put a gun to his head and I, I killed him, Mama. Well, the thing is, they are trying to find one particular person. Mm -hmm, mm, we all know who he is. And anybody that thinks he is this one particular person is driven insane and driven to suicide. It is a devious devious and i'm trying real hard not to say that word it's a devious plot and it's there it's in plain sight i could write a whole book on uh the rock code uh c the c is all the music that there is a magazine is an album 
uh, or, or CD. Now it's a, a CD box. Uh, whenever you hear hair, red, and kneel, that is in reference to Jesus and God. Now, we so, are on the break, folks. I hear it. I know this that. is the Earth Code with Bill Demarest. Join us after the break, and we'll get into more of these numbers and this woo. Wow. Stay tuned, folks. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Kev Baker, and you're tuned in live to tonight's Kev Baker Show got Johnny Whistles with me, and tonight we're joined by Bill Demarest. Now, you can catch him right after KBS on a Monday and on a Wednesday. So that's midnight in the UK, 7 p.m. on the East Coast, and 4 p.m. on the West Coast. But I tell you what, folks, tonight's show is turning out to be epic as well, because we're getting into something called the Earth Code. And Bill was sharing before the break information about codes that are contained within music. Very, very dangerous codes, Bill. Where do we want to go from here, Bill? Uh, I, I have to disclose it. I, I, I do, because this song, In the Air Tonight, Why He's Kept Me Silent, uh, okay, there, there is a very devious code in rock and roll, and as I said, they are trying to locate the one. And if you think you're the one, you're put in a three lock box, and this is very complicated. I met the gentleman that that. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, I am not Bill Demarest. I am Vexstar's avatar. I am also Mister Purple Ties ego. So that's a separate reality. What I can disclose now, because this is the moment that I have lived for. This is in the air tonight. I was a drowning man and he wouldn't lend me a hand. It, he saw my face, the lyrics, all oh, lyrics. So what I was getting at is there's a code in rock and roll that when the hair on the back of your neck stands up because you, and it hits you to your core is, is it's magic rock and roll Music of any kind is a God-given divine gift. And as I said, I mentioned to Johnny that there was a king who wanted to own and possess all music. And if you didn't bow to his music, he would take your head off. Uh, so it's, it's also a tool because at work, we have the same station playing over and over and over and over and over and over. And listen, if you listen to the same music over and over and over, it's a tool of that particular polarity, which keeps you in the same frame of mind, the same frame of mind, the same frame of mind, remembering when you heard it, remembering what it meant to you. But it, it, it's completely, it's a devious plot. And I've said this before in other places, um, and even when I was interviewed for my book. As I said, people who discover this code and don't realize they've discovered this code wind up like Charlie Manson. Now, I can picture Charlie Manson. He sends two guys out to pick strawberries. As the Beatles are singing Strawberry Feels Forever, they go out. And as they come back, the song, two writers were approaching. Charlie Manson was caught up in this box. Now, he took it to the third level. But when he got to the third level, where is he now? Where is he now? You, there's also the... Uh, conspiracy theory that he's not actually in jail he's just a a role player and that uh it's all a story which it is it's a fabrication because uh sharon tate was never murdered the autopsy pictures are not of a pregnant woman who had her baby cut out sharon tate grew up under her dead sister's identity that that's that's another whole thing so as i was saying i got caught in that trap i actually <laughs> I actually saw a guillotine hanging over my head and two entities stood in the doorway where I was laying on the floor waiting for the guillotine to come down. And one looked over at the other. It was a male and female. One looked over at the other and she said to him, uh, he's all right. He's just a time traveler. <clears throat> oh, now that made sense. Brought me back to the real world. 
Uh, so the, the code and rock, uh, you have the sea. The sea is all the music. Uh, the rivers run to the sea. There are songs. If you hear um, hair, kneel, uh, they're speaking to God. Uh, sand, uh, rain. Rain is, is, is the noise. Is the noise that this, this um, just completely blinds you to what's it actually in the music. Uh, lyrics, Johnny mentioned lyrics, standing up the back of your neck. Well, there, there is, there is, there are a couple of lyrics burning down the house. My friends, I not proud of it, but I actually attempted to burn down the house I was living in and I did not care. And I, I was kind of out of my mind at the time because I had landlords living next door and a uh, tenant in the back. Uh, needless to say, I didn't burn it down, but I was ready to do that. And then stranglehold by uh, Ted Nugent. The house gets in my way, I'll burn it down. So there isn't a song or a lyric that I cannot relate to my life. That's what makes my situation different. And it's all because of the earth code. As I said, when you use the earth code, it's going to make synaptic connections in your mind. Now, these synaptic connections are going to change your attitude, your role, what you do next, et cetera, et cetera, because you stopped and you paused to... Um, to pay attention to the numbers. Uh, emblazoned on the cover of my book is 526. And the reason for that number being there is because one morning, and it's, it's clearly explained in the introduction of my book, that that one number, that number was the, the number on my clock as I pulled myself to the edge of the bed and I saw the clock, it said 526, I thought, knowing zeal. I got up and I changed my entire direction to actually finish writing this book and I can't say I never looked back, but, you know, numbers have such a subliminal message that when you are aware of them, uh, you mentioned 1111, which is build now and, and, and be conscious of the law of attraction past the veil. I mean, it, it's so it's just it's so simple and people are so blind to it. And as I'm mentioning the rain, um, my, my roommate who came out here quietly and I want to thank him. Uh, there, there is a drain. There is a rain right now. It's just a a constant slow veil. It's just a constant slow drizzle. As for the clock, as of late, every time not every time, but when I look at it, it's 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 six five four three. It's one two three four. It's uh, three two one. And when I see that, and it, they're going up, I move forward. When they're going down. I recall a moment of the past. So what it does is when you infect your brain with this, um, he just came in from a 11 mile bike ride. There's that number 11 again, Bill. What kind yeah. of power numbers can people look out for that might be significant? Because I, oh. I remember yeah. Joe Joseph telling me that God, the source, whatever name you want to put on it, he's a bit of a comedian and he works in mysteries and he leaves his signs <laughs> in strange places. And, you know, yes. numbers for me are signs. They're like road markers, Bill. But what Ex numbers, in your opinion, could the listeners be looking out for? Uh, 26. It's zeal. When you see 26, you find zeal. You find something that, that, that takes you positive. And I just looked at the clock, and it's 636, which was the time I went to bed after um, Quest for Truth. And that's doing God's doing i mean it, it's it's got in the middle of the box. 36 is very good 35 is also great it, it's anything with a three in it now my birthday is 10 28 53 1953 so it's amplify coupling with affinity infinity and 1953 is thirsting knowing god uh it works with i live my address is 300 now, when you have two zeros, not only is it amplified, but it's both of God's eyes on you if the number is three. Uh, 333 three, three is God's number. <laughs> I'm, giving, I'm giving them my coordinates. 333 three, three is God's um, number. I live in the 33316 three, three, area code, which is God experience. The reason for 16 being experience is oneself doing oneself's doing is experience wisdom is one's knowledge which is 15 it's just and and the thing is 
it is so easy. It's subliminal. It's just, you know, a three is God, a four is structure, four walls, five, the Pentagon, the pentagram, they all K know, they know. Six, don't ask me why it's doing, but it is. Uh, seven, heaven, happiness, eight, the number of infinity, nine. The only reason nine is a Q question is because it's shaped like a question mark. Now, 10 is oneself amplified by the zero. So it's a amplification. 11 is built because it's oneself and oneself. It's one brick and another brick to build. It's one ingredient and another ingredient to create a recipe. It's just so simple. I can teach this to eight year olds and they won't forget it. And the, the and you thing know, that bought. Bill, you're definitely you're tapping into something here for sure. I, I really love all these numbers. And for me, they definitely do hold meaning. But I need to ask you something because a few Please moments do. ago you said that basically Bill Demarest, the guy we're talking to just now, is kind of an avatar for Vexstar or Star Vexor. Is that correct? And yes. you're like the ego of Mr. Purple Tie. Now, the reason I bring this up is because I've been throwing about the idea lately of whether this reality, this 3D physical world we're in, is this the illusion? And is on the other side, whatever you want to call it, over into the twilight zone, the other side, is that reality? And we've mistaken the two, Bill. Are you just here in this illusionary kind of matrix, but the real stuff's on the other side? No, it's all real, is real. Get it, Israel, Israel, uh, the, 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 the word. I mean, you know how uh, go, uh, Jordan... No, this is cool. Max I'm not trying to trip, trip you up at all, Bill, because this, oh, no, really, no, no. this is cool, because I love my dimension, stuff like this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is yeah. fascinating. Yeah, you see, what this does is, you know, in 2012, the veil was supposed to come down. Well, it did. It, the, it's out there. The, the awakening is out there. We realize that, oh, we're still here. Now, I got to be honest with you. I was waiting for 2012 so that it, I, I didn't have to do it anymore. And then I was waiting for Elena so I didn't have to do it anymore. Here's the deal. I signed a contract <clears throat> that says, okay, I, I'll, I'll take on this job, uh, Vexstar. You, 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 you can, you know, pull my strings if you wish, anytime you wish. But I, I, my contract is signed and it says I never have to do this 3D thing again. But it's all real. It's all real. It is evil against good, good against, I mean, it's all real. The, the, the bases on Mars and the moon, uh, the tunnels, the, they sent up the, uh, those Air Force uh, drilling rigs that made the tubes all underneath the United States. You can go from California to, to Colorado you know, in a heartbeat because they're in a vacuum tube, which moves at the, damn near the speed of sound. There's no limit on the speed because it's moving in a vacuum tube. So there's no resistance. It's like maglev. And there, there's no limit to the speed because it takes off slow. There, there's no uh, inertia dampeners necessary because you start moving slowly. It's like you're in a jet. You know, soon you're flying 500 miles an hour, but you take off slowly. So I've been privy to information as well as a lot of people who, who know what I know that they've been sending these things up to Mars and the moon. And we, we've been colonized up there. And Bishago, I'm oh, I love Bishago and White Crow. You know, you and me both. <laughs> and the thing is, once you accept, it's all real. I, also, we do have armadas. We have we have secret space force. We have armadas. From what I understand, we have about twenty armadas out there, which include battle cruisers of like ten kilometers long, and we have about twenty. And the Nordics have about 20. The thing is, the, the, the Dragos have roughly 400. But the thing is, the Dragos are not all here. They're, they're everywhere. They're, they're throughout the, the cosmos. <laughs> For the new listeners out there, they probably think Dragon, the Dragon X, SpaceX, that's probably the most advanced things we've got. However, Gary McKinnon, the whistleblower who broke into the Pentagon and NASA computers, he can back up exactly what Bill is telling you here because he's seen paperwork that was referring to off-world craft and non-terrestrial officers. It does sound fantastic at times, I do admit, but it's very, very true. And like Bill was saying a moment ago, with all of these dimensions being as they are real, 
that is very real out in the secret space as well, Bill. Yeah, and, and, and I, I, I guess it was on Freaky Friday as I opened up to you know what what I knew, and the, the gentleman kept asking me questions, and you know look at it this way. We are a species of guppies in the ocean. Uh, you, you have to admit there's whales out there. You have to admit that there's octopi out there. You have to admit that there are tiny diatoms. There are tiny creatures, microscopic, that if you blow them up to the size of your dog, you, your heart would fail because they are some ugly creatures. You have to accept it all. And the, the one, I, I want to say the toughest thing I have to accept, but I don't because I am where God has placed me. I have a nine to five hobby. I, I am blessed with the Salvation Army and it is a nine to five hobby. I refurbish bicycles that are donated and I do one hell of a job and it's my hobby. Well, uh, I must admit, Bill, the Salvation Army were there for me as well when I hit rock bottom. So I have only good things to say about that organization. And that's why I want to get the major on. I want the world to know this man. He 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 was supposed to they they don't keep majors around for more than five years. And this major is going on nine years because the Fort Lauderdale Salvation Army is the best rehabilitation program anywhere. It's just we keep it a secret because we don't want too many people here. The the the, the one reality I have to accept is I wake up in the morning, I wake up in the morning a robot. Dressing is, is is robotic to me. And I get in my Flintstone mobile. I have a very nice car, four-cylinder Camry, but I am driving primitive Flintstone mobile, and I take it to work. And when I get to work, I'm a hamster in a cage. Uh, that song, Don't don't Let don't let Your Wheels uh, Get You Down, you know, the sound of your own wheels gets you down. I did want to get back to Johnny mentioned the hairs on the back of his neck standing up. You are you are you are in the spotlight when this happens to you, when when the words of of music and and it's for you, you are placed where these words make a difference in your life. You can't just move about. That's like if you get on your knees and you pray in the morning and you pray in the morning and you pray in the morning, you get up and you go about your day. Do you remember that you were on your knees at two o'clock that day? If you simply at two o'clock remember that you were on your knees, it will make a difference. Now, in my case, uh, I don't want to say this, but my prayers have no effect on what God is going to do. I pray for people all the time, and I believe it, it, it adds up. The other night I was on my show. I was, I want to say damn near bawling, could have, but I had a man up, is when I want God to heal Joe Joseph instantly. Why not? I mean, if if, if we at I'm TFR... With you. I'm with you there, man. Absolutely. If, but you need to be like me, Bill. You just need to let go. Get in touch with that crying side, dude. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, 6.46. Well, I know my clock is three minutes slow. And, you know, Lucky pointed that out to me. And I said, no, 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 no. No, no, no. I, I, it's got to catch up to me because I'm three minutes ahead. There was a movie... Movies are, are incredible, too. Uh, there was a movie way, way back when, when a man had an accident and he went into a coma and he came out. He came out five minutes ahead of everybody else. He knew what was going to happen. The previous This is an old black and white show that he knew what was going to happen. And I I've been there. I have been there. What I do is reflected in the music. Here's an example. I'm at work. It's why I wish you all would listen to my first show, my first two shows. I'm wondering about the name of the movie where Ralph Macchio plays a guitar for the soul of the black man against the devil. I'm trying to remember the name of the movie and I can't. I sit down in the car and what comes on? The answer to the... Is it Crossroads, Bill? Yeah, the song Crossroads comes on. Okay, I... <laughs> I'm driving in my car. I don't have the radio on. My clock says 1033, Johnny. And I, it says Amplify Jesus. I turn the radio on. God is my witness. The next words out of my radio are, Jesus is all right with me. The Doobie Brothers were right on cue. It's this, this is the kind of stuff. I, music was driving me crazy. I taped the air drill of uh, the, the trickle to my air drill at work because we had five cars all playing different radios. It was not driving me nuts, but I couldn't handle it. I had to work. I had to focus on, I, I used to customize cars, sunroofs, moonroofs, T-tops, ground effects, leather interior. 
And I did that for 14 years. Well, one day I had enough of it because every time I reach up, they're saying reach up. Every time I snap a drain tube, uh, the next words I hear are bullwhips, whips, whips cracking. Uh, one day I hear Phil Collins singing there's a hole in there somewhere as I'm pouring glue into a tube. Well, I turn the tube around and, and it's leaking. This is the reality I live in. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. One day I'm, I'm going through the uh, sliding glass doors with my headset on and I got a short in the extension cord on my headphones and Phil singing. I see your lifeline is breaking. Uh, the Bridges to Babylon tour, the Rolling Stones were Jay Robbie, Joe Robbie's uh, stadium doing B Bridges to Babylon, and the radio stations around me were playing the Bridges to Babylon album. Well, it was time to take a smoke, and as I'm going out the door, I hear the DJ say, well, we got gate crashers. I look down. I'm on the fourth floor. I look down, and I don't care if you believe me or not, there is a car crashed into the security gate. I had a gate crash here in my front yard. Okay, I go back inside. I write down, I'm writing my book at the time, I write down three songs that I listened to at the uh, Pizza Hut in 1975. They were Radar Lover by Golden Earring, Hypnotized by Fleetwood Mac, and they speak of the gentleman that can fly over mountains and streams without a plane or any engine, and that's that's Don Juan, uh, the story, that's Don Juan, the Mexican sorcerer. People don't know who they're speaking of. And uh, Smoke on the Water. I'm sitting down and I'm listing these three songs in my book. And the moment I finish listing them, the radio station I'm listening to plays those three songs one right after another. Now, you wow. tell me, you tell me, I don't think I'm being watched. You tell me, I don't think that there's a webcam and a secure web watching my actions. And it, 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 it's that bizarre. But the one thing that saved me was the fact that I could not. No one could answer a question on my mind as fast as Crossroads. So I am talking about woo. You want to talk woo. You know. <laughs> you really are in some kind of synchronistic cycle, Bill. Oh, I haven't even scratched the surface. So I was talking about turning off my, my air drill. From the far end of the shop, I hear, since you've been gone, all that's left is a band of gold. I look at my ring finger of my wedding band, and my ring is gone. I, you know, it took a tenth of a second to remember that I helped a friend run a drain tube in the trunk of the car he was working on, had to take the ring off. And I, he's backing the car out to be delivered. I have to, I get out of the car, I stop him from backing up, open the trunk and retrieve my ring. Now at this point, here I was just so fed up with music following me, everything I did, if I turned left, it said turn left, if I'm driving over a bumpy road, and this happened, I'm driving over a bumpy road, and the the uh, the uh, talk radio guy says, well, now that the road's smoothed out, oh, okay, well, if it weren't for hearing that song, I would have lost my wedding ring. Yeah, it's just so at that moment, I said, well, whatever, whatever, whatever. It, it, it's a good thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And you need to listen to it as well. And, you know, I think yeah. a lot of us are going through life and we're probably getting similar kind of prompts, similar messages, but we don't have the eyes to see them or we don't have the ears to hear them. And, you know, hopefully, Bill, hopefully listening to information like this and just by being open minded. Hopefully people out there going about their daily lives, they'll start to notice all the synchronicities as well, because I think yep. we do all get them and I think we need to pay attention to them. And that's exactly what Zach was saying last night. If, if we no, um, um Naysay was saying last night, uh, if we all share our synchronicities, we'll wake up. And before the show goes over, I, I, I clearly wanted to state and it has driven me crazy. I mean, it has scared me to where they were going to drop a nuke on me because of what I knew. And if you listen to the song in the air tonight and Billy Don't Lose My Number and Peter Gabriel's uh, Salisbury Hill, they tell my story. So so does uh, Cheryl Crow. He sits down next to me. His name is Buddy Bill, whatever he's, you know, and, and I was on Monica Boulevard. I was on St. I was at St. Monica's Church as she's singing. Um. Uh, St. Monica Boulevard, as Phil Collins is at uh, Joe Robbie Stadium, which in Rock Code is Junior's Bar and Grill. Now, one that really, really blows me away is the first time I lost everything and I'm on a bus. What do you think I'm hearing from the headset sitting next to me? He's one of us. He's just another slob on a bus. So what I'm getting at is these mm, MFers know what they're doing. They're uh, Mama, mama, I put a gun to the man's head and he's dead. Yes, they're killing people 
with their music who think they are who they think I am. But here's the thing. I have beaten them. I am right here, global, spitting in their faces, saying, I got your number, people. Billy, don't lose my number. I got your number. And you know what? All they can do is kill me. And you know what? I'm going to come at them from the other side. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. You've saved my life. Six, five, four. Six, five, four. Remember that. Okay, folks, wherever you are, make it TFR. And Danny Touch.